I do now want to hand over to our next speaker, um, which is from Try and Review. Um, so just a few words about Try and Review. Uh, they created a platform to give consumers lots of information and transparency about the products they're buying every day um, by inviting them to share their experiences online. So like other review sites, Try and Review gives consumers the opportunity to share honest, unbiased reviews. Um, it's a new channel for consumer insight that allows brands to engage, collaborate and connect with their savvy customers and their feedback to keep improving their products. The paper will be delivered by Alexia Sicher, who has come from Singapore, um, or actually all the way from France. Um, but uh, Alexia is the co-founder of Try and Review. Uh, her background is in publishing. She's not a market researcher, actually. Um, so her background is in publishing and e-commerce startups. So Alexia started Try and Review in 2015. Uh, with a view to create auth authentic user-generated content and amplify this on social media. So their clients, and they, they have clients here locally in Indonesia, include beauty, FMCG brands, and are working right across Southeast Asia. So I'll hand you over to Alexia. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. So my name is uh, Alexia Sichet. Indeed, it's uh, French. I'm French, but I've been in Singapore for the past nine years, so I'm almost a Singaporean. Um, so I um, co-founded Try and Review three years ago in Singapore. And um, our goal with Try and Review was actually to give consumers a space a space where they could freely express themselves about everyday products. We all heard or we all know and use TripAdvisor, Agoda, and we go there, write our reviews on hotels, restaurants, but there was nothing uh, for um, um, everyday products in Asia. And with my co-founder, we really wanted to let consumers say what they thought about a product, whether it was a good experience they had with the product or a bad experience. So we've grown this community of consumers across Southeast Asia, starting from Singapore first, and then Thailand, Philippines, Vietnam, Indonesia, Malaysia, Hong Kong. And uh, with the database of users growing, we also started to work with beauty FMCG brands who were interested in getting this kind of feedback from, uh, from users. So try and review on one, on one part is a community of users we engage on a regular basis to get their authentic and unpaid feedback. And uh, so we have half of the content on the website that is really spontaneous, not uh, incentivized. And on the other hand, we work hand in hand with uh, FMCG brands and help them to get their product tried and uh, reviewed by consumers. Um, so how does it work concretely? So the website is really open to anyone. You can go there, um, create your account. It's totally free of charge for you. Just a few steps uh, to create your account. And then you can start to write product reviews. If you want to read reviews, you don't even need to uh, create an account. The website, everything is, uh, is public. All the content, all the reviews, test the pictures, everything is, uh, is public. And um, on Try and Review, you also have the chance regularly to um, get your hands on free products. And so this is, so you have in front of you an example of a, of a sponsored campaign where a brand tells us, okay, we want to get this product tried by 100, 200, 500, 1,000 testers. So we put up the campaign uh, page and we call for testers. So anyone who is interested to get the product can come and apply to be a tester. So we, of course, leverage on the existing base of users we have, but we also recruit new users all the time on a regular basis to make our database of users grow, of course, but also make sure that the same tester won't always receive uh, products because we work with different uh, companies. Some are, are competing with each other, so we also have to be careful with that. Um, uh, and we, we want the feedback and, um, and um, the reviews to be extremely authentic and, uh, and genuine. But it doesn't mean that as a user you can get 
all the products you want. We actually do um, specific profiling. Anyone can apply to be a tester, but we ask them to take a short survey. And based on the answers they give us, we decide whether or not they qualify to be a tester. So usually this step, um, la, we, we, we keep this um, uh, survey open for a few weeks, let people um, apply to become a product tester. And we usually get between 2,000 all the way to, to uh, 7,000 people who apply. So it's, uh, it's really, uh, uh, it gives us the chance to really build really sizable panels. And uh, based on answers that uh, people will, will give us, we decide whether or not they, they qualify. Of course, the qualifying criteria are decided beforehand with the clients. Sometimes um, they have a very pretty mass product, so they will just focus on the age group, gender, location, and sometimes that, that's it. But in some cases, we, we really go deep into profiling. For instance, we work a lot with the health supplement companies. So uh, we were looking for people who have certain uh, health concerns, or um, we're, looking a lot, uh, we're working a lot with uh, skin care companies. So they're also looking for uh, certain types of skins, whether it's sensitive skin or uh, allergic skin, et cetera, et cetera. So it's applicable for really um, uh, all type of, uh, of industries. And, uh, and again, one of the key steps when we launch a campaign is really to understand who should uh, receive the product in order to enjoy uh, the product as much as possible and be able to give um, um, an insightful and accurate uh, review on the product. The next step is to send out the product to the testers. So we don't ask them to come to us and, uh, and give us a feedback on the spot when they try the product. It's important that they try the product in the comfort of their homes to really reproduce the real uh, experience. Uh, but um, of course, we give them some, uh, some instructions on how to use the product. And we also give them some guidance on the type of feedback and content we are uh, expecting from them. So we usually tell them, try the product sometimes um, just one day trial uh, will be good enough for them to give uh, a feedback uh, for food for instance or makeup they usually uh, use it once and are able to to give uh, an insightful feedback but in some cases if it's a health supplement or um, if it's skin skincare whitening skincare they'll have to try the product for a longer time so we we explain them really clearly what uh, what they have to do and uh, because we are also I'm um, uh, very much interested in uh, the wealth of this user-generated content and what brands can do with this content later on in the marketing activities. We also uh, uh, insist on uh, asking our testers to submit some visual content. So we ask them to take pictures of uh, either the product or themselves with the product and to visually also um, share about their product experience. So within this uh, mission letter, we also tell them and show them examples on the type of visual content we're expecting from them. After what, we send them back to try and review, always. Why do we send them to try and review first and don't, why don't we send them to Facebook or uh, any other platform, e-commerce platform, etc.? Because once the content is there on trial and review, we own this content, we have the right to reuse, repurpose this content as we want, and so do uh, uh, our clients. So everything will come to us first. We send testers to um, the product pages and they have to submit their feedback through uh, this uh, review widget. So rating criteria up to five, they are usually um, customized for the product. Of course, we ask them to submit a written uh, comments, written feedback on the product. And we, when we started trying to review, we got quite amazed with uh, how insightful and uh, how rich the uh, written content was. Really had testers telling us uh, about their life story and why they liked the product, why they didn't like it. So extremely insightful. Uh, purchase intention, we asked them if they would be likely to buy the product again whether they would recommend it to their friends. And um, we also need to know if they're submitting the review um, after having uh, uh, purchased the product or if they got it for free, either from trial and review or from uh, another source. So this is how we then analyze which content is spontaneous and which one is, uh, is sponsored. Um, and um, last, we also have the option to 
asked to, to add um, customized post-trial questions. So in some cases, our clients are interested just purely to collect some insights that they will be using internally. They want to ask some questions on the product usage or, or what the testers uh, um, felt about um, one or the other product benefits. Uh, or it's um, questions that we ask um, because the client has in mind a claim wants to get substantiated, so uh, later calls. So i give you a very concrete example. Uh, we have some clients who want to uh, uh, have claims such as uh, this micellar water is, uh, removes makeup or is better than other micellar waters uh, I've tried before. So we'll ask the question, um, uh, do you think, or how, what do you think about this micellar water? First choice, um, uh, I didn't like it. Second choice, it's, uh, it's much better than other micellar waters I've uh, tried before, etc. And the output is, for instance, 90% of the testers say that this micellar water is better than uh, other micellar waters I tried before. So all the content we collect through this uh, uh, widget and all the data will be uh, uh, analyzed very carefully by uh, our teams. And the idea is to come out with this kind of claims that can then be leveraged by the marketers, the digital teams, um, uh, in their marketing um, uh, activities later on. Apart from all these uh, claims and, uh, and data and insights, we collect uh, all these contents that we put under user-generated content. User-generated content because it's a content that is coming from the users themselves and is, uh, it's a very uh, authentic content. So it really goes from pictures to Insta stories to short videos um, to reviews and, uh, and ratings. And it's, a, it's an extremely rich content um, um, and also very powerful. We all know and we are all consumers, so we all, uh, before buying a product, we will uh, Google the product or if we are on an e-commerce site, we will check uh, the reviews from other consumers. Uh, when we are on social media, we are always interested in seeing uh, feedback or pictures from other consumers uh, sharing about their product experience. And all this content really has an impact on our uh, purchase decisions. But what happens with uh, all this uh, written uh, content that we get? Um, it's it's a content that is extremely um, uh, useful and actually um, very actionable. So you have here uh, an example of a negative review because of course we have some content that is very positive, but we do also have some users who don't like the product and will write uh, a negative uh, review on the product. And this content is uh, not only it's going to drive trust from um, all the users towards try and review, they'll see that, well, that, that, that's good, they, they, they're not hiding the negative reviews, they're not trying to, to um, um, remove the negative content, especially when there is a campaign coming from a, from a brand. Um, so first, it drives a lot of trust, but second, for the brands themselves, sometimes it's an extremely interesting feedback and it makes them also understand uh, what they can improve uh, on, on their product. So you have an example here of uh, negative reviews we got for a skincare campaign. And the, the tester said she doesn't like the fragrance, uh, fragrance is not pleasant, the packaging doesn't seem to be very high. And so when we got this uh, feedback, of course, we shared it with, uh, with the brand. We first offered them to submit an answer to help to clear the concerns of that specific tester. But we were also thinking of all um, the other users who would probably come across this review one day. And we wanted the brand to uh, address uh, the concern to also answer um, potential questions of uh, thousands of uh, other readers. Uh, so they very clearly explained uh, to that tester that the packaging and the fact that it doesn't seem hygienic is because there's no lid, because it's actually very patented packaging with an air-free uh, pump and nothing can actually get inside. And they also explained her that yes, there's no fragrance because it's a skincare that is catered to a very sensitive or 
jig skins and, and, uh, and uh, fragrance is usually not recommended when you have an allergic skin. Um, but for the brand uh, themselves, it was also very insightful because they realized that something that for them is extremely advanced was um, a real innovation with, uh, with um, uh, air free pump was actually not perceived as, as such by the, by the user. So it, may, it made them uh, think of communicating in a, in a better way on that packaging and, and explain, put a note on the packaging itself on the benefits of this uh, air free pump. So it's, um, uh, it, it sounds maybe a bit, uh, a bit uh, simple, but it's, it's really few insights that can be collected here and there and then can really, can really help the brands to improve if they can't change the product, at least improve their communication and give good explanation to their, to their users. Um, another example, quickly, uh, this, um, this shampoo, the packaging was, um, was reviewed as pretty bad by, by a user, and the, the picture is extremely insightful as well, because we can clearly see that uh, the packaging after um, uh, the, the bottle, the shampoo bottle after being in the, in the shower got wet, of course, and, and the, the, the packaging was not looking very nice, probably because it was not uh, very waterproof. And also that uh, specific testers say that uh, there was no way to kind of close the bottle, so it makes it very difficult to carry it around or to travel with, a, with this shampoo bottle. Um, um, plus the fact that to close the, the, the pump, they had to press on it, and then they were wasting some, uh, some product. Again, good feedback that could help the, the brand to improve their packaging and their, and their products. Apart from, uh, from insights, um, uh, what we really like at uh, Try and Review is what our, our clients can do once they have uh, this content. We are uh, we're extremely uh, passionate about uh, user content because we really see uh, its potential and uh, we, we, we don't want to let all this content stuck and dormant on tryandreview.com. We, we also want our clients to leverage it as much as possible. So the first thing we highly encourage them uh, to do is to use what's available to create fresh new uh, market, digital marketing content. So you have a few examples here of initiatives taken by our clients to uh, create uh, short um, uh, videos using the, um, using the, um, the uh, results and uh, the assets of the campaign, or um, uh, to purely to drive awareness on social media, and in some cases, using the content and the claims to drive um, uh, traffic to e-commerce and, uh, and, of course, get uh, conversions. So here you see on this, uh, in this uh, short video, the testers are talking about the product and, uh, and, uh, and uh, the video is also using the claims and the reviews that uh, were generated on, on Try and Review. We also um, encourage uh, our clients to use this content on their own uh, brand.com website when they have one. It's something that's easy to do. Either they can integrate it in an existing review plugin, and in that case, they get a lot of SEO benefits because ratings are proven to organically give a higher uh, ranking uh, to uh, web pages. Or if they don't have uh, such review plugin, they can at least have a space within their website to showcase what, are, what consumers think uh, of their product. And they can use, of course, the testimonials, but also the, um, the visual content. E-commerce um, e is, uh, is growing very fast. And uh, unlike uh, in Western countries where e-commerce has been there for many years, and, use, and shoppers are quite used to review their shopping experience or review the product on, uh, on e-commerce. In the region, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, very often a challenge for the brands to generate reviews from uh, their users. So what we have done uh, almost at the very beginning after we launched Try and Review is um, reach out to major e-commerce and marketplaces in the region and uh, partner with them to facilitate the integration of reviews and user content uh, onto their website. So the very first ones we, we worked with were Lazada, 
as well as uh, Watson's. So every time we have a client who wants to see their uh, reviews on these websites, we will facilitate the integration. The brand don't have uh, anything to, to do. Um, so these are regional partnerships. Uh, uh, at a local level, we are also reaching out to uh, uh, e-commerce and marketplaces to grow this um, network of e-commerce partners. For brands who have their official store, for instance, on Lazada, uh, we also see them, and, and we're, we're happy about that, we also see them leverage the content, the claims uh, uh, inside their uh, e-commerce uh, store. So you see an example, this one was uh, in Malaysia. Um, they used the claim and the rating that they got uh, from Try and Review and pushed it on their uh, store cover. Cont uh, content that can also be leveraged in marketing collaterals, whether it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, offline or, or online, and also in-store. So although we are a digital platform, although um, our reviews are extremely powerful uh, for um, online reputation and, uh, and uh, online traffic, etc., this content can also be leveraged offline. And uh, this year for us was really um, um, a great year in that sense because we saw almost all our clients starting to use this content in store. So, we, we, gi we give at the end, so you saw before in the, one of the previous slides, you saw the, the try and view seal certificates that uh, we give to our clients after a campaign is over. And they're free to use this everywhere, online as well as offline. So you see here some um, initiatives of brands who have used this, this seal either on product packaging or uh, on their POSM. Sometimes they come with their own uh, design, so you have a few examples here as well. So uh, the, the left example is from Maybelline. They, they actually had a big uh, display in store and, um, and used the, um, uh, one, the, the, the girl you see uh, at the bottom, she's, uh, she's uh, one of Trinview's testers. You have the, the user's testimonials and of course the overrating. In the middle, big. A campaign run by uh, Huggies, the claim that they've put on their POSM was substantiated through try and review. And uh, Dove, um, another way also to, to use the content for them, uh, in the top of using the reviews and, uh, and the quote from the tester, they also added um, a QR code that users could, uh, could uh, scan and they were sent where they could read more reviews. We also um, um, have the uh, ability to invite our tester, our best testers, after a campaign is over and uh, offer them to join an event, join a photo shoot uh, and more. And the idea here is to make, so to, to um, uh, help the, the, the brands um, find a kind of a brand ambassador, but who is actually a real user, and we drive um, probably more authenticity and uh, more trust from uh, from other consumers. So you have here an example of uh, two testers who got re-engaged um, by uh, trying to view and uh, and the brand. We invited them for a photo shooting, and the brand then declined the entire marketing uh, plan uh, uh, based on these two testers. So from POSM to printed ads to editorial content. And we can also uh, um, create uh, video content and invite testers to come from, uh, for a video testimonial. So I'll show you uh, a quick example. So we can, we can do video content that is, uh, that is more um, um, about uh, data, metrics, so we call it um, motion graphic or infographic video. But we, uh, we also do um, interview-like uh, videos, and we collect very um, um, neutral and authentic feedback from, from the testers. So this video is, uh, is a good example. I was 
So this, this video is a, is a long format video. We do all types of videos, sometimes very short, 10 seconds, that are better for social media, for instance. The idea is really to drive credibility. Um, uh, and we, we, we do that more and more. And we, we, so if you're interested in video content, we have more examples uh, for, for more industries. Um, so this is really the, the core um, uh, offer of uh, Try and Review. But um, so we've been uh, running Try and Review for three years. Uh, we're a team of uh, 12 people, and my business partner and I were still very much in, um, in touch with our clients. And this uh, helps us to uh, also um, uh, uh, understand and, um, and uh, uh, answer to our client uh, needs in a very agile way. And this is what is actually leading us to um, new ways of leveraging try and review. Because we have this base of extremely engaged uh, consumers, uh, we have some clients who asked us, hey, uh, Alexia, are you able to also use try and review to help us do some lean innovation? So what, what Pierre said at the beginning, I'm not at all from the research industry, so at first, I was, uh, I was um, not too sure if it was something we could, uh, we could uh, uh, move uh, to. But after discussing with this, uh, with this brand, we decided that yes, there is a way for us to um, help the brands before they even develop a prototype and, uh, and do some, uh, some uh, uh, actual product testing. There was a way for us to engage our testers and uh, ask them whether or not they would respond or what they would think of just a product concept. So we are also starting to move towards that direction. And uh, so we are now actually helping brands to get insights and get concepts and product tested before a product gets launched as well as after in order to help them create all this um, um, extremely wealthy content for their uh, marketing. So this is what you see here uh, on this screen. So we can ask uh, users what they think of one packaging or the other. It, we can just ask them questions on uh, an ID. We can also uh, help brands to identify whether the new innovation or the new product they have in mind would fit well under their uh, brand, or maybe they should uh, develop this product under another brand, et cetera, et cetera. We also have developed a tool to help measure the purchase intention. So we, we are actually simulating an e-commerce environment and offering people to buy the products on our website. And we can also do some uh, price testing. So we use uh, A-B testing in order to identify what would be the, the breast pricing for a new product proposition. So just to, to sum up, uh, so Try and Review is really um, a great platform that can enable us to do many, many things. And um, what, what we, we see now is that we can really um, um, uh, walk from concept testing all the way to prototype testing, product testing, and then help brands to get uh, uh, great content to help them um, uh, push their, their product on the, on the market. So that's um, try and review. I'm, um, so I'm in Jakarta till tomorrow, and uh, I actually have um, my day free. So if you want to, to discuss further into details, be very happy to, to have a chat with you. Terima kasih.